You see? Now, so uh, we're going to leave this list here because you need to start pouring libations. You see what I'm saying? Now, there's not a, a lot of people because, see, we get into the technicality of it. Because when you don't deal with the spiritual world, it's got to be a technicality of what you do into the physical. So there's no, remember now, there's people in here and there's another dimension where the people that you think are dead are waiting on you because that's life and this is actually death. So the people that you think are gone, your people that died, if they haven't reincarnated, they're sitting here with you. And when you pull these, these, these particular, you conjure up these particular invocations or the libations, you bring them back. And that's the force that helps you. You see what I'm saying? That's the force that helps you. Now, the key to the whole thing is, is this. You need to start learning how to do these things within the last days. This is the stuff that can protect you. You pull your libations. You step outside, you go everywhere you want to go, you won't get shot, you won't get killed, and you won't get anything. Well, it's not a matter of uh, uh, protecting yourself from black people, but in the next couple of months, you might have to protect yourself from white people on a small scale. But I'm here to tell you today that they really don't have no juice. When we really get into what we're dealing with here today, they don't have no juice. And I'll tell you what I mean because they're running scared because they're dealing with me and they're doing some things and they're running scared. So now... Some people say you got to get plants and all this is the plant. Look, get you a plant and make sure you don't drown out your plant. You first libate the plant because, see, I believe in pouring a good deal of libations. So the first thing I do, I'll say, Awas, well, we'll get into that particular deity in a few minutes. Then I go, Ashe, and I libate my plant. Now we're going to go into and you go, Ashe. So, Awas, Ashe, okay. Now, we'll get this bucket right here. We're getting ready to get down here. And I'm going to call out some gods. And I'm going to call out some gods. And uh, what's that? When we have sisters that come in. The That's right. You know the deal, brothers. Any sister come in and ain't got no seat, unass the chairs. That's right. That's right. So if we see a sister coming up, you all get up out them chairs and let the sister sit down. You see what I'm saying? Or uh, we'll put the Billy Bat Club on you. <laughs> you see. Unass the chairs. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? First of all, you will understand, you're going to say, I don't see how in the devil that brother there can be a holy man. Well, let me tell you something. 99% of what you think is holy when you come to your preachers, that's because a white man set the, set the doggone standard for that clown to be holy, and he ain't holy what a doggone. You see what I'm saying? Because once you really get into the really spirituality, 99% of what you think is holy is not. That's called spiritual ceremony, and it has nothing to do with the real spirituality whatsoever. You see, 98% of the churches talk against the real spirituality, because if they really, if Jesus or whatever ever came back, <laughs> they'd run from it. Because number one, it won't be no white man. Check. All right. So let's deal with this. Okay, now. Okay, let me deal with some gods. Oh, yeah, I want to call out these Enochian deities. Because last week we did the Enochian deities, and boy... They really cut up. And then we'll call out some Necronomiconic deities. And it was interesting because I called out the Necronomicon deities and because I got the sister that can see, they came into the radio station that night when I gave it over the radio. They were very happy to use their name because these names had not been uttered for the last, let's say, the last three, four, five thousand years. Okay. So now if this stuff sounds messed up, I say I don't really agree with that because I don't know about it. But remember, if it sounds strange, that means you're learning something. Because if it's something you know, don't need to be here, right? If, any, if, if you're not open for in, any additional information, was no need in coming in the first place, check? Yeah. That's the problem, like I said, that the preacher get over on you in the first place. If you go amen, that means he ain't teaching you nothing. And that's the problem with our people. They have been teaching you what you wanted to hear and not what you really needed to hear because they didn't know what you really needed to hear. That's called the art of public speaking. Tell a person what they want to hear and say nothing well. You can say nothing if you can say it well. That's emotionalism. You see, I, I, went, through, I went through four, eight years of that in college where we had these um, public speakers come up. You see what I'm saying? Cornbread eating Negroes. And they'd come up and they would come into some stuff and they would be talking all this good stuff. And people, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, we're, but everybody's ignorant. You see what I'm saying? So also, too, it's not necessarily say you got to bear witness to what I'm dealing with. That's the African right to be wrong. And if everybody agreeing on the same thing, somebody wrong. You see? 
Check? Check. All right, then. So we need to get out of the public speaking as far as a person saying things well, saying nothing well, and playing on your emotions. 98% of the time when the preacher is hollering in the church, you can't understand what he's saying in the first place. But he's steady hollering and stuff, right? But you're saying he, you, and you start crying and stuff because he's, he's appealing to your emotion. Well, if you go to the Michael Jackson concert, they do the same doggone thing. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing. That's the emotion. They play on your emotion. They say when Elvis used to shake his behind, white girls would pull out their fingernails and didn't know that they pulled their fingernails out until the next morning. You see? So that's getting your emotion up to a certain level, and you thinking that's spiritual, that's emotionalism. You see? Check. Yeah. That means that, that, mean that a man can come up and tell you Mickey Mouse is God. If he said it the right, oh, Mickey Mouse, <laughs> you might do the same thing. Check. You see? I see. Okay, now. Let's call out some gods. Let me get these, uh, I'm going to get these, I'm going to call out... I'm going to give a, a few of these uh, Nookie and Deus, and we'll explain what this is in a few minutes. The particular text that we are giving out now is text that the Moors went up in Spain and left at the University of Salamanca and the 16 other universities. And the white boys the cup, uh, uh, recovered the Nookie and text about two, three hundred years ago, about, about 200 years ago. And then after that, your Necronomiconic text, they, they uh, uh, recovered those texts in 1977, and after that you had Son of Sam, and all kind of crazy stuff started going on. So we'll tell you all about that. So right now, you don't need to be spooked out about nothing. Because you live in hell right now, and if you ain't scared of this white man, you ain't no sense in being scared of some devil that don't exist. Check. You ain't, you, you really don't believe in God. The only reason why you go to church is because you scared of going to hell. Otherwise, you would not be bothered with that on, on Sunday. That's, that's basically the way it is. Right now. Because I can go to the average Christian, and the Christian will have hard times, and I can tell him to really deal with the Spirit, and he say, I can't see the Spirit. And I really can't take that face value. You see what I'm saying? Check. Let's do this. All right, let's give a, a few, a few Enochian deities, and then we'll go to the Necronomiconic deities. And it's good to do this for the simple fact when we pull these deities, what happens is the spirit come in the room and then we can get past a couple of hours, which you think it's two hours, and you say, man, I've been here five hours. So let's put everybody under the spell. <laughs> now for you people that's into to, to, to the, 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 uh, the moralistic way of dealing with things, they say God is everywhere. So when we call out these different gods, it's not talking about different gods, it's talking about the different attributes of the one God, or the God one. Allah has 99 attributes. The Christians say God is everywhere. Well, in Egypt and in the other, in the ancient religions, they understood that the God had different components. And when you put them together like a puzzle, it represented the one God and the God one. Check. And at this particular time, I think everybody here should be adult enough to know there's only, that know that there's, I don't care what religion you talk about, there's no God different than the other God. It's all talking about the same God. Check. All right, then. Okay, let's deal with this. Ol, Ashe, Sanuk, Ashe, Borg, Ashe, Gogo, Ashe, Iyad, Ashe, Bald, Ashe, Lach, Ashe, Kaz, Ashe, Vanpo, 